to California at the age of eight. Became diabetic at age seven, just before I came to California. I've now lived in California for 50 years, from 1957 to 2007. I attended elementary school in Torrance, high school in Torrance. Attended El Camino Community College, attended Long Beach State College, attended San Jose State College, and attended Pepperdine College. First degree and two master's degrees. Mm. Worked for the city of Long Beach for, uh, or excuse me, Long Beach Unified School District for 28 years. Worked for the city of Torrance as an administrative aide for three years. Worked in the city of Torrance in the technical services department in the library for a little shorter than a year, probably about a half a year. Went to Santa Catalina Island, worked in a private school for one school year. And at the end of the year, the librarian in uh, the public unified school district retired in Avalon. And I was interviewed for a job. I think I'm probably the only person who was interviewed, and they hired me. That's how I got my job in Long Beach. I worked there for, I worked in the uh, Catalina Island for six years, and over here for 22. I probably worked at 10 or 12 different schools. The school I work at now is the best one I've had, and uh, it's my 11th year there, and it's uh, the most fun I've had in the district for all the time I've worked there. I really enjoyed it. Guy, and he yeah. was a fun guy to be around. Yeah, yeah. and he was, you know, uh, interesting person. Has all his books and his music and all uh, to to be around. But he's just now. It's just constant worrying about him. Uh, it's funny, now I never really did run in this direction because uh, what I did was I ran out that way, which is Palos Verdes. Um, I used to do a 23 mile run on Saturday. And I go around the Palos Verdes Loop. And this is kind of offset from it, it's down in the other direction, you know. Feels great until the minute I get down here in a bunch of traffic, and then I won't feel so good about it. <laughs> Ah, we got a break in the River Jordan here. <laughs> the flow. Now I gotta turn on my African American music. Oh, that's, you know, you want to talk about a radical right winger. I'm so conservative that I make a reactionary look like a liberal. <laughs> There's a song by Jethro Tull, you ever hear it? Living in the Past. Castle room with wavy grains of sand. Two women lived in a seashell lined pool, protecting me from things unknown. Back in a time when one's shell was one home. Our shells were fashioned securely on rocks like Gibraltar's, with families and their notions unshaken by incoming storms. On the rocks stood stairs made of sand, with moats and bridges, turrets and halls, towers and entry gates, and tall sandy walls. Our seashell lies were guarded by moats filled with tides. Loved ones flowed back through years, renewing vows before altars. Children built shapes for the whole family, with lives held in buckets and pails filled with sand. Father brought the boat, and brother fashioned the moat. Mother shaped the towers and the monuments, inspiring circles of love. Sister made a castle garden heart in the shape of an ark gliding dove. This was the morning when gulls swooped on high, but later in the day, shorebirds screeched their sounds in a foreboding cry. Two women floated in waves of yesteryear, strand after strand, melting the castles, shifting their sands. Sisters married and moved away, 
storing grains for a future day. Brother sailed on a different tide, and mother remarried long after father quietly died. So many lives churn in a surrounding sea, and a tide moving out, setting sand castles free. Somewhat. Somewhat, but yeah. not. He's still in denial because he's still <sighs> thinking he's going to find a wife and play the piano and. You motherfucker, stop it! You quit it! Tim, you quit it! Quit it! Oh, God, quit it! <laughs> and going down to Brazil, then we had to get a somebody to push him around in a wheelchair. Carry and, him. Uh, I mean, yeah, he was glad that he did it. And I'm glad he did it because he got to see a part of the world that he never had seen and would never have seen. Yeah. But it was very difficult on him, and it was even worse when he came back because he went got went off the hospital, got off the airplane and went directly to the hospital. When he came back, he'd had a he'd had a spinal stroke. He's got you know what's working for him is working against him, also. That's interesting. That that stubbornness that he has makes him go beyond what's expected of him. I think that's why he's still alive. That's why he ran out to America. It's good.